In this video, I'm going to show you how to create and receive a purchase order in the iConnect system through the iConnect back office. So to start, once you've logged into your iConnect back office, you'll want to go to Catalog on the left-hand side, then Inventory Management in the submenu, and then Purchase Order in that submenu. So the next screen is going to display quite a bit of information. Um, first of all, you're going to have a, a way to filter uh, existing purchase orders. So here we have we've got a list of all of the purchase orders, whether they're opened, in progress, or completed. We have two pages with 10 items per page. Um, so we can actually filter these down because once you accumulate uh, several um, purchase orders, you're going to want to be able to filter them. And you can filter them by start and end date. Um, we have quick dates. You can do last quarter, last month, or day. You can do two date um, filters. Uh, or you can do the last 90 days, 30 days, or seven days. Um, you can also filter by the manufacturers, the vendor that the purchase order went to. Um, you can filter by the status of the purchase order, whether it's opened, in progress, completed, or voided. And you can show deleted. So if we check this on, it will show us deleted purchase orders. Once we have these filters set, we'll just hit go, and it will filter the existing purchase orders. So on the table, you can see each purchase order has a number. Um, the purchase order screen is used for purchase orders and stock transfers. So here you'll see type. So was it a stock transfer or a purchase order? Um, we'll see the due date, which store it was from and which store it was to. So often the purchase order will be from the same store that it's to, whereas a stock transfer would always be from a different store than the to store um, because you're transferring stock between different locations. Um, we have the manufacturer listed here. Um, in the case of stock transfers, you won't have a manufacturer because it's going between uh, stores internally. Um, whereas with a purchase order, you're ordering from a vendor or a manufacturer, so you will always have a manufacturer. Um, you have a total for the purchase order and the status of that purchase order. So these have been completed. These are in progress, so the, the goods, the what's being purchased is on its way, but it hasn't been received yet. Um, opened means that somebody has opened the purchase order, but it has not been sent off to the manufacturer, or the stock transfer has not yet been sent off to the location it needs to go to. And then we don't have any here, but you'll also have voided. So if you make a mistake, or if the purchase order or stock transfer is not needed at the last minute, you can go ahead and void it. Um, and then we have completed date. So um, these uh, completed date will show when the status was last changed. So completed, this status is completed on this date. Um, this status was changed to in progress on this date, even though it's not yet completed. Um, that's what that date's going to show. So rather than edit or mess with the existing purchase order, I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. So we're going to hit the plus button, and then we're going to choose purchase order. Okay, so first we have a due date, so what, what day this uh, purchase order needs to arrive. So we're gonna set that as maybe give them a week. So we're gonna do next uh, Friday. Um, then we're gonna choose vendor. Now this is important because when you go to search your product, you're only gonna find products for the given vendor that you've selected. Uh, obviously you're not gonna be sending a pr uh, purchase order with products that come from one vendor to a vendor that doesn't carry those products. So we, we force you to choose the correct vendor. So I created a product in an earlier video with the Amazon vendor. Um, so I'm going to select Amazon. And the ordering location, I'm logged into retail store, so it's going to be by default retail store. But if you're in a master account and you want to do a purchase order for a different store, um, you can say that you're ordering from this store for this store, or you can, you can do any combination you want if you have those access permissions. Um, but for this instance, we're going to say we're at the retail store. We're a manager at the retail store doing an order at the retail store for the retail store. Um, you can obviously add uh, more uh, locations. So if you're doing a purchase order for multiple locations, you can add an, a location. We're going to keep it simple and just do the retail store. Um, now, there's a way you can load items. Um, there's different ways you can load items. So this load items button allows you to do some sort of autom some some automated um, loading of items, basically. So in when we created a product, if you remember in a previous video, there was a minimum reorder point. So if you are below that minimum reorder point, that product is considered to be low stock. So if I clicked here, 
any products that were in low that were considered low stock that is below the minimum reorder point for the retail store location would populate in this uh, this chart or this table here. Um, you can also search by category rather than entering the exact product name SKU um, or code. And you can also load from a CSV file if you've got a very large um, purchase order. For now, we're just going to load manually. So we are actually going to enter the SKU, if I can remember it correctly. I'm going to hit enter, and that product should load up. Sure enough, we've got the SKU here, the name, which is custom t-shirt, the cost, the quantity on hand, and the quantity we want to order. Okay, so and we can edit the cost as well. So if the cost changes, um, we can go ahead and edit that. The quantity um, is how many we want to order. So let's say these are we think these are going to sell pretty well. So we're going to order about 50 more of them. The total updates 50 um, times 10. So we have a uh, our purchase order is going to be for 500. And then we can add a discount and we can add tax. We're just going to leave those open uh, empty for now. So once we've got that good and everything looks good. Um, on the purchase order, we're going to click open, and that sort of puts the purchase order, um, that opens up the purchase order, but, so it's in the system, but nothing's really happened with it yet. So let's go back, step back for a second, and we're going to go back to the table to see what this purchase order looks like in the table. We're going to go ahead and leave this page, that's fine. So in our table now, we have a new purchase order. Um, the due date is next Friday. It's from the retail store to the retail store. Manufacturer's Amazon. Your total is $500. And it's been opened. Um, so And this is, again, so the status was changed uh, just a minute ago, um, today at 2.27 PM. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and edit this purchase order, because we want to get it on to the next step. And the next step will be that it's in progress. So once the purchase order has been opened, we can mark it as in progress in order to signify that it has been sent off to the vendor. Um, the export feature allows you to export the purchase order to a format that would make it easy for you to send to a vendor. Um, in this case, PDF or Excel are probably the easiest um, formats. So you could export this to an Excel and you could email it to your vendor or you could print it out and mail it. And then once you've done that, you'd want to hit in progress. Um, the update button here, by the way, is if you come in here and you, you decide, oh, I actually ordered um, a few more, you can actually change the quantity and update. Now you cannot change the quantity. You're not allowed because it's in progress. It's been sent to the vendor. We can't update it anymore. Um, but before it's been put in progress, you can update the quantity. Um, you can update some of the discount. You can update the tax in case. But once it's been sent to the vendor and it's in progress, it's in progress and we can't do anything to it. So now let's take a step back one more time to, to the um, table with the purchase orders. And you'll see now we have the complete date changed because we updated the pro the, the progress, uh, um, we updated the status rather to in progress just a minute ago. So it was 227 before, now it's 228. And now rather than having an edit button, we have a receive product button. Um, we can also view the, the purchase order and hit receive from there, but this makes it really easy. We just click receive product. So once the store has the goods in hand, they can receive it. Um, as just a side note, average of the costs would be for if you've had a kind of a product in your store for a long time and the um, cost of that product has changed between purchase orders, um, you can actually average out the cost. Uh, so if it goes up with your vendor, you can average out the cost. Um, in this case, this, is, this product has not changed in cost since I created it just a few minutes ago um, in a previous video. So the average of the cost is not going to do anything. In any case, we can say here that we have received 50, or we can say, well, we actually only received 47, and this will show on the purchase order um, record. But let's say everything is good, so we're going to check that, yes, this is in the box. We have 50 of them. We're going to hit receive, and the purchase order is done. So now, as you can see, we completed it. The status was updated at 2.30 PM. Um, it's completed, $500, and if you need to, you can go view it again.
here and see all the details. And you can also export it, just like you could export it before it went into progress. Now that it's completed, we could export it just to keep a paper record or a file record on our computer. And we can send a receipt um, to the vendor or to whoever needs one.